Assalamu alaikum. Hope you're all doing well. Grade 11, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about narrative tenses. Um, before we start, I need you to have the following, please. Your activity book or workbook, your pen or pencil to write notes, Yes, girls, any color will do, no need to ask. Um, your English notebook, the one you used to use in class, remember? And uh, in case you, mis you misplaced your notebook or you um, can't find it, that's fine. Just bring some papers and uh, let's stop. Let's stop now for you to go get your stuff and uh, then we can continue. I'll be waiting. So what are narrative tenses? Let us read from your activity book, page 68. On page 68, the first column on the page, we have narrative tenses are verb tenses that we use to talk about the past. They are often used when we tell stories and when we describe past events. Three tenses that we use for narratives are the simple past, the past continuous and the past perfect. So, the name narrative tenses is actually another name for past tenses. And the four past tenses are, again, simple past, past continuous, past perfect, and past perfect continuous. We will be focusing on the first three, and we are not, um, we do not need to talk about the past perfect continuous in this book. So how do we use them? How do we use these narrative tenses, these past tenses? For a general discussion of the uses, again, I need you to refer to your activity book, page 68. And I'm reading the second point. Uh, look at the second uh, bullet mark. When we describe past events or tell stories in the past, it is important not to mix past and present tenses. The reader or listener will not understand when the events happened and your story will not be clear. Of course, this is something that we discussed before in class and we said that it is very confusing to mix up tenses, especially past and present. So how do we use these tenses effectively? In our book, the concentration is on how to use them in stories, in telling stories. So I'm going to read these uses from the book. I'm still on page 68, the first column, and I'm going to read the third bullet point. We use the past simple to describe the main events of a story and to describe sequences of events. Notice that this point is, um, Again, concentrating on the use of the narrative tenses in telling stories. We will move on after we finish this to uh, a more detailed and uh, uh, analytical use of the tenses. So going on uh, back to the book, we use the past simple for completed events in the past. For example, after she said goodbye to her family, she got on the train to London. She sat down on her seat and looked out of the window. So this is the use that the book provides us for the simple path. By the way, you can say path simple or simple path, both are correct. Moving on to the fourth point, we use the path continuous for unfinished actions and events at a point of time in the past and for repeated actions that were happening over a period of time. Example, the young man was studying engineering at university. I was working on my project for a month. Uh, final point, we use the past continuous to describe the situation or background in which the events of a story happen. And I told you before, when we talk about, uh, or when we try to tell a story, we have to paint some kind of background for the action. It's just like painting uh, a drawing. 
you need the background. So uh, let's look at the example here. That day, my grandfather was celebrating his birthday in the garden, the sun was shining, and the birds were singing. Moving on to the second column at the top of the page, we are still on page 68. First point, the second column, we use the past perfect to talk about things that happened before the main events of the story. For example, he had dreamt of helping people all his life. Finally, his dream was coming true. By seven o'clock in the evening, he had completed his, his homework. I needed to read this from the book because our book is uh, the main source of information for us. But I think we need a more uh, detailed description of um, uh, the uses of each of the tenses. So I'm going to move on and uh, we need to take a closer look at each of these tenses, how they are formed and how they are used. Ready? So get out your thinking cap. Maybe I should have that, I should have listed that on the uh, list of things that you have to prepare. If you don't have your thinking cap, go get it now. First tense, the simple past. How do we form the simple past? The simple past is formed using the verb ed. In addition, there are many verbs with irregular past tenses. Uh, past tense forms. So uh, how do we form the past for talk? We add ed and we have talked, walk, walked. Uh, but again, there are irregular verbs. Actually, the irregular verbs are more than the regular ones. So uh, you need to check uh, the list of verbs if you have a problem with the forms. You need to memorize the different forms of the verbs. I will later on uh, tell you where to find them. So going back to the simple past, how do we form it? By using verb plus ed in general or irregular past form. How do we make questions? We discussed questions uh, before, uh, but I will have a separate presentation for questions later on, inshallah. For now, we just need to say that questions are made with did because we don't have a helping verb with the main verb in the simple past. So we use did for questions and for negatives, we use did not. Let's take some examples to show us what we mean. You called Debbie. Called is a simple past tense. It is a regular verb that takes an ed. I can add to this sentence a word that specifies when this verb happened. So I could say, you called Debbie yesterday, or you called Debbie last week. How do we change this statement into a question? Called does not have any helping verbs to come before the subject. So what do we do? As we said before, we ask for the helping verb do to come and help us. So we use do at the beginning and the verb, which is in the simple past, throws the, the tense on do and do becomes did. So the final uh, version or the final uh, question would be, did you call Debbie? Did you call Debbie? How do we form the negative? We form the negative by using did not. Again, because there is no helping verb, the verb did is our helping verb with a simple past. Let's now on, move on to the uses of the simple past. Uh, before we move on, I would like to refer you to examples of ir irregular verbs uh, in your activity book or workbook on page 76. Please go and see them and study them. On the timeline, how do we uh, represent the simple past? As you can see here, we have the present or the, the now as the present and anything that is, 
that has happened before now is represented with a specific point with an X on the timeline to show that it happened in the past. What are the uses of the simple past? The first use is completed action in the past. Use the simple past to express the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. So how do we know uh, if we take an exam or do a worksheet, how do we know that this is supposed to be in the simple path? Well, in exams and worksheets, you usually have signal words. These signal words help you decide that uh, you need to use the simple path. But we're talking about general usage of the path. And in, in speaking, in, uh, in everyday life, we don't always use a specific time, but uh, we do mean a specific time, even if we don't use it. So don't worry about exams and worksheets. You will have some kind of hint or signal to show you that this is actually uh, or should be in the simple path. Let's look at the examples. The first sentence says, I saw that movie. Saw is the simple path of C. I saw that movie in 1990. In 1990 is a specific point in time. And so I must use the simple path with it. I did not see a play yesterday. Again, yesterday is a specific time in the past and we should use the simple path with it. Notice in this sentence, we have the negative of saw. Saw. Saw is changed into didn't see. Please pay attention that when we use did, the main verb goes back to its base form. You cannot say, it is very wrong to say, I didn't saw. You must say, I didn't see. Only one part of the verb should show the tense. And did is showing the past. So the word see does not have to be in the past. It should not be in the past. Notice the third sentence. Three years ago, I traveled to Japan. I traveled. Travel is the simple past of travel. Why did I use the simple past? Because at the beginning of the sentence, I have the expression three years ago. This is a specific time in the past. Finally, the last sentence, did you have dinner last night? Notice that this sentence is a question. Again, if you want to form the question for the simple past, you have to use the verb did. And did shows the past, so the main verb does not have to show the past. So did you have dinner last night is the correct way to do it. Use to, a series of completed actions. We use the simple past to list a series of completed actions in the past. These actions happen first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So if we want to mention a series of actions, things that happened one after the other, we can use the simple past for all of them. Notice the examples. I finished work, walked to the beach, and found a nice place to swim. Finished, walked, and found are all simple past verbs. They indicate that all of these verbs happened in a row. They happened one after the other. Second sentence. He arrived from the airport at eight, checked into the hotel at nine, and met the others at 10. Again, arrived, checked, and met are simple path verbs that happened in a series. They happened one after the other. Final sentence, did you add flour, pour in milk, and then add the egg? This is a question and the verb, the helping verb did is at the beginning and all of the main verbs are used in their, ba in their base form. Add, pour, 
and add again. I hope that this is clear. We will go back to, these, uh, to this idea of a series of completed actions when we talk about the past perfect. Number three, habits in the past. The simple past can also be used to describe a habit which stopped in the past. So it's something that you used to do. It can have the same meaning as used to. To make it clear that we are talking about the habit, we often add expressions such as always, often, usually, never. Uh, these are frequency verbs, if you remember, adverbs, sorry. Always, often, usually, never are frequency adverbs. And they indicate uh, the number of times the verb was repeated or not repeated. We can also use expressions like, when I was a child, when I was younger. Let's look at the examples. I studied French when I was a child. I studied French when I was a child does not mean that I studied for one time. It means that it was something repeatedly done when I was a child. So it was a habit or uh, something that uh, happened regularly. Second sentence, he played the violin. He played the violin, or he always played the violin, means that he had that habit before, but he does not play the violin now. Number three, he didn't play the piano. This is again to show a habit in the past, but it's used in the negative form. Let's look at number four. Did you play a musical instrument when you were a kid? Again, in the form of a question, we are asking about a habit uh, when we were uh, younger. Uh, following, we have, she worked at the movie theater after school. We can say she used to work at the movie theater. Used to, and the simple past, um, can indicate a past habit or a recurring activity in the past that has stopped. This is the important point. It is not, it does not continue up till now. This has stopped. So she no longer works at the movie theater, but she used to work at the movie theater. Finally, they never had breakfast. They always skipped that meal. They never had breakfast means that they were, their habit was not to eat breakfast and they always skipped it. They never had breakfast. I hope this um, use is clear. And this is a use that is very, very simple, similar to the first use we mentioned before when we talked about completed action in the past. The only difference between use one and use three is that a completed action in the past might happen only once. While when we talk about happens, habits in the past, we are talking about things that were repeatedly done in the past. Now, pay attention please, because we have a problem usually with students who confuse the simple past with the present perfect. Why the confusion? Well, because when we taught uh, or when we uh, discussed the present perfect, uh, we said that it is something that happens in the past as well. So what is the difference between the simple past and the present perfect? How do we know when to use each one? Let's read. If the sentence has a specific time in the past mentioned, for example, the words yesterday or last week or four months ago or in 2003, any kind of specific time mentioned in the past, then the verb must be in the simple past. This, mean, this means that something happened at a specific point in the past, and I want to make sure that the listener uh, or the person I'm speaking to knows that it happened in the past at a specific time. On the other hand, if the sentence has no specific time mentioned, and the action is somehow related to the present, then we use the present perfect. So if something happened in the past, but I don't mention a specific time, 
And more importantly, I don't want to focus on when it happened. I just want to mention that although it happened in the past, it still continues in one way or another, or its effects continue in one way or another up until the present time. So let's read the note. Note that the word since does not have a specific time when the verb happened, but only points to when the verb started. I mentioned the, the word since here because some students ask me, if you're saying that the simple past is used with a specific time in the past, how come do we use the present perfect with the word since? Following is a detailed description of the use of the word since. But let me read the note again. The word since does not give a specific time when the verb happened. It only points to when the verb started. And so the verb used in the main clause with since is in the present perfect. However, the verb in the dependent clause with since is in the simple past. Since may be followed by a specific time or it might be followed by a subject and a verb. If you remember, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of the year, we discussed dependent and independent clauses. And since is a kind of conjunction. It is actually a subordinating conjunction that can join two clauses together. If since is used as a coordinating conjunction, then it joins one independent clause and one dependent clause. That, if that happens, then the clause that comes with since uh, must have the verb in the simple past, while the main clause or the independent clause has the verb in the present perfect. Uh, since may also be used as a preposition and may be followed by only a noun. Uh, not to confuse you, you may think of since the way you like. You do not need to know what it functions as. You don't need to know uh, dependent and independent clauses uh, uh, in detail. But you need to know the following. Since may be followed by a specific time in the past. I'm reading from the screen in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. So for example, I can say, I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Notice, we did not use yesterday alone. We said since yesterday, that is starting yesterday. He hasn't seen him since 2003. They haven't visited since my last birthday. In all of these three sentences, the word since is used to indicate the starting point of the verb. It does not indicate how long, uh, for how long the verb continues, and it does not indicate if it's finished or not. Usually when we use since, we understand that the verb happened or started happening uh, at a certain point and continues up till now. Also, such sentences are usually followed by another sentence that explains the effects that we still feel in the present. So, the sentence, I haven't eaten anything since yesterday, may be followed by the sentence, and so I'm very hungry now. So the idea of not eating that started yesterday has some kind of effect on me today. That's why I'm hungry. He hasn't seen him since 2003, and so he misses him a lot. So the fact that he hasn't seen him for such a long time, actually starting from 2003, made this person miss his friend a lot. The third sentence, they, have a, they haven't visited since my last birthday, may be followed by a sentence uh, such as, they haven't visited since my last birthday, um, and I'm really angry with them. So I'm angry now because they haven't visited. Again, I keep repeating, since is used with the present perfect, not the simple past. 
Let's look at the second set of examples when since is used as a conjunction and is followed by a subject and a verb. I'm going to use the same sentences and let's see how since is used. I haven't eaten anything since we ate together yesterday. Since we ate together, we is a subject, ate is a verb. And this verb is in the simple past. It indicates the starting, the starting point of not eating. Exactly like the same sentence above, when we talked about uh, the first sentence, since yesterday, is the same as since we ate together yesterday. Both of them provide us with a point in time when the verb started happening. Let's look at the second sentence. Ali hasn't seen Ahmad since they finished school in 2003. Since they finished school indicates a point in time when the verb started happening, since the not seeing has started happening. It is exactly the same as since 2003. Both of them are starting points. Finally, they haven't visited since we celebrated my last birthday. Since we celebrated my last birthday is exactly the same as since my last birthday. Both of these parts or expressions indicate a starting point for not visiting. I hope that you understand this point. And uh, if you really don't want to get into detail, you just have to know the following. Since can be followed by a specific time in the past, or it can be followed by a sentence with a subject and a verb. If it is followed by a specific time in the past, or by a subject and a verb, in both cases, the main verb in the main clause, the independent clause, must be in the, simple, in the present. So, ready for a short quiz? Read the following sentences carefully and fill in the blanks with the simple past or the present, or the present perfect. Remember how to form each tense. The simple past is formed by using ed or irregular form. The present perfect is used with has or have plus past participle, or uh, as you like to call it, verb three. Notice, of course, that has is used with he, she, it, and have is used with are, we, they, you. Ready? So I'm going to give you three minutes to do all five sentences. Don't worry, I will be here to help. Ready? Let's go. Please read the sentence and check if there's any indication of a specific time in the past. If we have any specific time in the past, you should think of the simple past as an option. If there is no specific time in the past, and we only have words like recently, lately, or since, then we must use the present perfect. So I need you to stop your videos here, please, and take some time to do these sentences. I advise you to copy them on your notebook and try to solve each sentence. Take your time, I'll be waiting, and when you're ready, you can come, uh, come back and start the video again. I hope you did well in the quiz, and uh, I hope that you got the answers correct. Let's go back and see the right answers. So, Sam in San Diego a week ago. The word or expression a week ago indicates that this happened at a specific time in the past. So, I have to use arrived in the simple past. The answer is, Sam arrived in San Diego a week ago. Number two, my best friend and I, each other for over 15 years, we still get together once a week. This sentence does not have a specific time in the past, although it tells us that we know each other 
uh, for over 15 years. So it gives us duration, but it does not give us specific time. Most importantly, the continuation of the dialogue says, we still get together. So this knowledge of each other, this, this friendship that we have is still going on and it still has some kind of effect. That is why we get together once a week. Here, the verb know must be in the present perfect. My best friend and I have known each other for over 15 years. Number three, Simpson is a fantastic writer. He 10 very creative short tour stories in the last year. One day he'll be as famous as Hemingway. So in this sentence, I have the expression in the last year. In the last year tells me that this verb happened at a specific point in time. And so with this expression, I must use the simple past. The answer here should be, he wrote 10 creative stories in the last year. Sentence number four. I, uh, okay, great. So let me just write these, uh, these answers for you here. Here, the answer is arrived. Here, the answer is have known. Here, the answer is he wrote and let's move to sentence number four i have not this much fun since i be a kid the word since starts giving me these flashlights ding 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 pay attention i'm since and with since i have to use the present perfect in the main verb in the main sentence so, I have not this much fun since I, a kid. The verb after since must be in the, as we said before, must be in the simple past. So here, since I was a child is the answer. While here we have the main verb should be in the present Perfect. I have been had this much fun since I was a kid. Moving on. Question number five. Things change a great deal at Qualtech Incorporated. This is the name of a company. So it's saying that there is change, change happened. But does it mention a specific time? No, it doesn't. And so, because it doesn't mention a specific time, and the rest of the sentence, actually, the sentence of the, the, the rest of the paragraph talks about how things are now. So, I would say that we have to use the present perfect instead of the simple past, because there is no mention of a specific time. For the change. So we say things have changed a great deal. When we first, now notice when we first start working here three years ago, three years ago is a specific time in the past. And so the verb with this expression must be in the simple past. So when we first started working here three years ago, 
the company had only six employees. Since then, notice, let me just read this out. Okay, since then, the word since indicates that we must use the present perfect with it. And notice that since here is not followed by a subject and a verb, it's, it's followed by an expression of time, then. So, since then, we, what do we use here? We use the present perfect. We have expanded. Sorry. Expanded. To include more than 2,000 full-time workers. I hope that um, the answers are clear. Take the time to copy the answers if you like, and then we can move on uh, to our next uh, our next uh, uh, tense, which is the past continuous. <laughs>